Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Sinicola. I am, again, the executive chair for the Laboratory Robotics Interest Group for the, for the LRG in New England. And I want to welcome you to our first virtual meeting. Uh, this is our rapid fire meeting that we decided to have as our intro into the virtual world. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, we have lined up three exciting speakers that we hope you will enjoy. Uh, just as some general information, uh, the chat window is, should be available. And there's also the, uh, an opportunity for questions and answers. Each speaker has uh, 10 to 12 minutes to actually uh, do their presentation, which will be followed by maybe one or two questions. And then based off of that, uh, we will then proceed to the next speaker and continue that, that uh, process till the end, at which point uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end of the meeting as well. If anybody is interested or if you would like to have additional information or would like to reach out to one of our speakers, uh, you can please put your information either as a question or in the chat window and I will gather that information and make sure that we put you in touch with the appropriate speaker. So with that being said, uh, we're going to begin our process. Our first talk today is from Spin Wang of Tetra Science, and he will be talking about uh, data as plumbing for the digital lab evolving to a sophisticated system with data engineering. And I'm going to turn it over to Spin. Spin, up to you. Thank you. Let me start, my sh start sharing my screen. Can people see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. I'm Spin Wang from Tetra Science, the CEO and co-founder. So today we'll be talking about how we're going to treat data as the plumbing of the digital lab and how we are using data engineering to evolve the plumbing system into a more sophisticated uh, network. So uh, John Conway from 2015 Visioneers has presented uh, about an analogy between a building and uh, the R&D organization. He, in that, he talked about uh, what is power, what is uh, communication system, what is uh, culture, the analogy uh, between a building and the R&D organization. And in that, he talked about plumbing as the data and processes and instruments. And today, in our presentation, we'll zoom into that particular analogy of data plumbing for the digital lab. We'll first define that, then we'll clarify using the analogy, this kind of requirements for this plumbing system, the impact of not taking action, and also our recommendations uh, for the audience. So we'll get started with, uh, with the definition of what is the data plumbing system for the, for the digital lab. So let, now let's think about analogy once more. Uh, you think about plumbing, you think about running waters in your home, you think about laundry machine, you think about uh, having you think about all the, all the appliances uh dishwashers uh you think about uh it's a, it could be nice and simple but plumbing can also be extremely complicated if you think about it in a context of a, a new york city skyscraper a, a new england aquarium uh red sox sports stadium right you have complicated plumbing system and if you think about analogy uh in today's biotech and a pharmaceutical uh, organizations in the R&D organizations, plumbing can be equally, if not more, challenging. In an R&D in R &D organization, you have heterogeneous instruments, you have disparate file formats. Uh, uh, often, a lot of those file formats are vendor proprietary. You have distributed partners like your CROs or CDMOs that are conducting research outside your organization. You have different applications. Informatics softwares, ELN, LIMS, different vendors, uh, registration system, sample management. Then you have many workflows. There are many assays people are running. There are many type of experiments people are running. And increasingly more often, you are seeing uh, newer visualiz new visualizations and analysis and data sciences that are being demanded uh, by the organization. So our de definition for the R&D data plumbing is the collection the cleansing, the harmonization, and the movement of your, of your R&D data. Very similar to the plumbing of the water in your house or in the building. And both types of plumbing are, can also be, can often be messy and dirty work. 
uh, involve the flowing of something, information or water through a complex system. They are usually simple to start, but can quickly become complicated and requiring special tools, skill sets, and careful design. So what are some of the examples of the data plumbing in today's lab? CRO sends you a large volume Excel files, PDFs, sometimes over email, sometimes via file share. Scientists have to manually download them and quality check the files. Scientists copy paste the values from their instruments into their lab notebook, then manually transcribe into their electronic lab notebook. And often this process requires second scientist review and third scientist review in compliant, in compliant environments. Data scientists have to manually compile the results about multiple batches, multiple samples, adequates at different time points into an Excel spreadsheet or some kind of a data science tool to illustrate trend and anomaly. So the plumbing is actually happening. They are not just, they're just happening not in a consistent or automated way. So now that we have established the analogy, let's think about what are some of the requirements of a data plumbing system in your organization? What are some of the lessons we can learn from, uh, the, uh, uh, from the actual plumbing system. First, you don't really want water, dirty water coming to your building, right? And that's, that's, that's something you want in a plumbing system. And incoming water will go through additional filtration or sanitization. It's the same. You don't want dirty or untech data going to your data lake, your ELN, your visualization tools. Even though it is crucial to collect as much information as possible, it is also crucial to attach the right met metadata, perform the validation, and also data harmonization. There can also be leaks, broken pipes and clocks, and we all, we all know that, we've all experienced that. In data plumbing, there can be processing errors. So that requires alerting and notification to show and indicate uh, those behaviors. It is challenging to understand how the water is actually flowing through the plumbing system without a map, right? It is just how are those pipes connected? So it's the same in your data plumbing system. It requires a central dashboard to, to view and manage the data flow. Think about having a Google map, but describing the data flow for your lab. You also, you often want to swap out and replace sink and shower head without changing the rest of the system. It's the same. You want to have configurability such that you can switch from one instrument to another, from one ELN to another without impacting the overall system. Especially nowadays, you want to plug in multiple source uh, consumers for the data, Spotify, Jupyter Notebook, RStudio, uh, Tableau, you name it. The last one is that when, when, when water went going to the building, uh, it, under, it has a, some pressure. Pressure allows it to go upstairs and around the corner. It's the same for data. When you connect a new data source, a lot of data is ingested. So it ne there needs to be proper throttling, load balancing, and auto-scaling to handle the new data sources. The data plumbing also has its unique challenges. For example, collecting data from instruments can be very challenging. And you need to keep track of logs for all the data processing. You may often want to do re rerun or replay of the data flow because now you have a new ELN or you change the, the data model. You want to rapidly customize and upgrade your pipelines because ultimately it's information and you want to configure that. And, and you want to keep track of all the changes and upgrades uh, to the data processing, to the plumbing system. So those are some of the unique challenges of data plumbing. If we do not take action and focus on the plumbing, you, the times are wasted. CRO sends data manually processed, scientists copy paste the data into their lab notebook, and data scientists, scientists manually wrangling the data. Those are simple scenarios that people are spending manual effort on this. And we're talking about a significant amount of hours being spent in manual transcription and plumbing type of work uh, by a scientist. If we, at scale, we're talking about millions of hours and hundreds of millions of, of, of a wasted resource uh, in just the scientists and data scientists handling the plumbing. And if you think about the opportunity cost, what could the scientists do with those a million hours back being productive? What can the data scientists do with clean and accessible and prepared data at their fingertip? Right? So those are the opportunity costs that I encourage the audience to think about as well. So in the end, we want to provide our recommendations. So the most important thing is to plan the data plumbing as a first level architecture consideration, not as an afterthought, right? When you buy a building, before you buy a laundry machine, you know the plumbing is there. You think about the plumbing first, you think about the data flow, the data architecture first, before you connect the ELN, before you connect the instruments. And second, start now, right? We know that time are being spent in manual work and we hope 
that our world-class scientists and data scientists can, can have a system that they can just, uh, the data is taken care of. It's like you open the, the sink uh, the, or shower head, water start to flow. So that's our presentation and thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate that. Uh, let me open it up, see if we have any questions. Okay, uh, no questions. Spin, just out of curiosity from the standpoint, how do you deal with connectivity? What type of requirements do you usually suggest that people provide to you when trying to connect into uh, their own infrastructure? So uh, we usually recommend people to adopt the cloud uh, and a lot of the, the scalable, a lot of the requirements we talked about, uh, auto scaling, throttling, notification, alerting, logging, configurability, those are perfect uh, kind of solutions or uh, features that the cloud and something like a, uh, Amazon Web Services can provide. So using the cloud to build the uh, connectivity, the plumbing layer, will save uh, the organizations a lot of effort. And also you are able to leverage the scale, the elasticity uh, that came with the, that will come with the cloud. Okay, uh, we have one uh, additional question that came up. Uh, can you share how many instruments you have built data pipelines for? Well, sometimes, I mean, uh, we have connectors, uh, agents collecting data from the instruments. We have pipelines parsing the data. Right now, I think we are getting closer to 75. Uh, and uh, the best thing is that this is a crowdsourcing effort. Uh, we work with one pharma company. They asked TechnoScience to prioritize uh, Biotech Fleet Reader and uh, uh, Tcan Liquid Handler. Another company asked for another subset. So we're able to crowdsource and share all the work we do with all the companies. And for example, some company will ask for new features. For example, integrating with Waters in Power, uh, some customer at pharma company wanted uh, to, to, to not send all the information to the cloud, to the plumbing system, uh, only after something is signed off. So that is a feature request that we're able to roll out uh, to, to all the companies. So okay. who would believe this is a cross-sourcing effort? All right, and we'll ask uh, one last question. And while we're doing this, uh, uh, Spin, if you don't mind, uh, stop sharing. And Frank, would you mind beginning your share? Uh, the last question is, which LIMS and data analysis tools have you integrated uh, using your pipelines? Uh, we have integrated with uh, Dalmatics, uh, IDBS, Biovia, Riffin, uh, Citigens, uh, and quite honestly, oh, Core Limbs. Quite honestly, it's agnostic. As long as the system has a software API, we'll, we'll use uh, the pipeline to push to that. Uh, and analysis tools include uh, Dalmatics Vortex, Spotfire, Tableau, and a lot of our customer and scientists use uh, Jupyter Notebook and RStudio to do more generic data science work. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, we're now going to flip it over to uh, Frank. Uh, Frank, please, it's up to you. Uh, 